Hello there everyone, Robert here, and today I want to showcase a feature that Janine and Wix Studio that should hopefully help you be able to increase a little bit of like visual flair, customize your website a little bit, be able maybe to help out with branding. There's quite a few use cases with this, but without any further teasing, just gonna go ahead and jump right in to showcase the feature and how to get this added to the site. And a few tips and tricks along the way as well, so let's go. So as you can see, I'm here within Wix Studio and hopefully you can maybe see what the feature is and that image masking. So here I have, well, it's the same image three different times, but with three different masks. So you can see on here that the image is masked. And while this is possible to do using external features, Adobe, a lot of their suite of tools has the capability of doing this. Here's like one article within Adobe XD on how to be able to like add a shape and then mask to the shape. And while it's not too much work to do in an external tool, this definitely does alleviate a lot of the need of going to a location, getting the image and then adding the FPG and then masking it to the shape then importing it into the Wix Studio or to your platform of choice to be able to go ahead and do this. So I just want to showcase how you can kind of just mask the images, have some notes maybe one of the things will be kind of how to do this opacity as well with, with the images that you add and also some other areas that you can mask towards the end of the video but normally when it comes to adding elements i'll always start by hey let's go here to the toolbar and in the quick add just kind of add in some of the media that we need I do want to mention as well, because I feel I don't say it enough in any of these videos, you also can right click and there is the option to quick add elements from here. So we have things like images, titles and paragraph tests, buttons, containers, video boxes, shapes and video players that really quickly we can just add. So right click, just right there. It's usually the very next thing to wherever you happen to click. So in this case, I'm just going to add an image. And here we have the image already added. So in the toolbar, you can see that circle with kind of like overlapping the square a little bit. This is where we can add our mask. So you can see here, there's quite a few different shapes that are available. Some like pretty crazy. Some again with that kind of like opacity and blurring effect going on. Uh, some very unique shapes. And if you do see with any of these, your images do look a little maybe like stretched out or this doesn't necessarily match the SVG shape. Down here, you can reset to the shapes ratio. So just something to note. And if the ones here maybe aren't enough, then we come here to add. Wix has a like hundreds, a plethora of SVG shapes that are here. So you can see there's like circles and teardrops and there's quite a few different ones. I do want to mention if you do something like, let's say like this hollow circle, only the part that's filled in will be the part that's visible. So this hollowed out part that actually won't display the image. Same here with this frame and this corner here, only this portion will show up. So it'd be cutting off a lot of the image and maybe you want to do something like this. Also, it's something that's very thin, like certain arrows that are on here, like this arrow icon here, only this portion will be visible. You'd be cutting off a lot of the image. This again, you totally can if you want to. And if it's not what you want to do, you can always just choose a different mask or reset it by just choosing the square icon. But in celebration of Steamboat Willie going into public domain this year, I'm actually just gonna scroll down here and there was a Mickey Mouse like shape. So I'm just gonna select it here. Let me move myself out of the way just so there's more space so we can see the mask to shape. But once I do this, cool. have it here. Again, let's a little honky, but I'm gonna reset to shape. And once that's done, there you go. All that looks pretty good. So I did want to mention again, you can also add in your own SVGs. So if you want to create your own, if you want to go to websites or resources and download some, I actually found this great one here, svgshapes.in. And this is great. There's no ads on this site. There's no like pop-ups or anything necessarily to it. There's no cost to these. Uh, attribution isn't even necessarily required. But if you do want to get the creator and host of the site, a coffee or maybe some McDonald's men, definitely I would recommend it. But you can see they have lots of SVGs on here. So if you don't even necessarily want these for shapes, like to match your images, if you just want to use them as a normal thing, you can. You do have the option to choose a solid color or a gradient. And in this case, the gradients are kind of what I wanted to highlight on as that you can get this kind of blurring effect that's done here. So when you are using and uh, working with the gradients, you can control the opacity levels to some of these images. 
So like this specifically might maybe require a little bit more work to kind of try to emulate this as best as possible or making your SVG in this shape or in that kind of color opacity level. But you can kind of emulate something similar like this by just toggling down the transparency, moving it around and just cool. This is really like opaque. Then here it's you know, kind of like normal. But let me actually just go ahead and showcase with one of the side files I have on here. I already created my own. Again, this one's straight solid. This one down here has a kind of opacity level going on. So you can see again, it's a lot darker on the left hand side than it is on the right. And yeah, that's kind of it. I do want to mention as well that while this is new to the images that are here, you we've actually had this feature available within text and for like text and as well for images. What's nice with the text is it's actually SEL searchable. So it's actual text. So users can highlight it, copy it. And again, bots can pick it up, which is great for SEO. If maybe you want to use this like as a heading tag of any sort. And then for the videos, it is very specifically for video boxes that can be done. There are three different types of videos. If you have any questions about maybe what's the difference with these, which one's the best use case for certain examples, I'd be happy to make a video about that. Feel free to let me know like either in the comments or preferably in the communities. Feel free to message me on there and I'd be happy to explain it or maybe it warrants a video going into some of the differences and similarities between these. Yeah, but with all that being said, don't want to dovetail too much into that. Again, definitely let me know how you're using this in the communities, in the comments. Is it something that you think is really cool? Something that you can kind of probably use on your website. If you do use it on the website, feel free to share it with me. I'd be happy to share it with the team. Maybe get it on the inspiration page or even just highlight it in another video with myself or Jesse. But yeah, everyone, thank you so much and have a great rest of the day. Bye for now.